When I was in college, I started taking road trips. During summers, I would want to go visit my friends who lived in faraway places. And we had a junker third car in my family that my grandparents gave us for our needs. So a lot of times I would be asking my parents to borrow that car to go five hours into the woods of Pennsylvania. And my dad knew that that wasn't the greatest plan. There were no cell phones yet, and it didn't feel like a very safe way to operate. So he gave me his best advice. He said, never let your gas tank go below half when you're on one of these trips. He said, if you're not careful, you're going to be singing along with the radio, and all of a sudden you're going to see the gas light come on, and you're going to have nowhere to get gas. So save yourself that stress. Just make sure that when the gas gauge gets to half, you get gas. And then he put a fine point on it. He said, if it gets below two thirds, keep your eyes open for a really good deal. Look for the cheapest gas you can find. But once it gets to half, don't delay. Just fill up. And that's what we're hearing about in the gospel today. Make sure you don't go below half. Jesus says to the bridesmaids in the story, don't go below half. Don't allow yourself to not be prepared if the wedding couple is really delayed and then you ran out of what you needed and now what do you have? You're left out. Make sure you never let it go below half. And of course, everything in this story is a metaphor. So the question is, who is the bridegroom for you and for me? Who is or what is the long-awaited opportunity that we could blow if we're not paying attention? These opportunities in life come quietly. And I think that gas for our car or oil for our lamp is the least of it. A real opportunity is when our teenager, who hasn't had a real conversation with us in months, suddenly is lingering in the kitchen. And we're realizing, oh, they're looking for connection here. They're looking to have a conversation. If we have a teenager in our life, we have to keep an antenna up because those moments are not gonna be obvious and they're not gonna come often. And if we don't have gas in our tank, we're not going anywhere. In my last parish, there was a very holy woman at the end of her life. She was one of those pillars in the parish. Every parish has them, we have them. Someone who had been involved in the parish for years. And I learned a lot from her. A lot of us considered her kind of a living saint. And she was a complicated person, so she was a living saint in many ways, and she also was a little salty. And sometimes she had a mouth like a trucker. And most of us just found her all the more charming because of those qualities. But it was clear that she was nearing the end and everyone in the parish was praying for her. Her adult daughter, who was in maybe her late 50s, was in the hospital room with me. And I was talking with this woman while her daughter was on the phone with a realtor. And she was having a, an animated conversation about granite this or that and square footage and, and a lot of different details about a house she was thinking about buying. Her mother interrupted her from the hospital bed and said, sweetheart, could, could you call them back in a little while? She said, I really want to talk with you while Father Scott is here. And the daughter said, mom, this is important. Just be patient. I'll, I'll be done in a little while. We'll talk then. And her mother looked at me with that look, that knowing look. The next day, she went into a coma and she did not wake up from it. When I saw her daughter at the funeral, she was devastated, understandably. And it probably made her feel even worse, though I didn't intend it, when I said, did you get the house? A moment for connection is like a gas station on a journey. We don't want to miss it.
We may not ever pass again this way. We may not ever go by another filling station on this route. And every moment does matter, which is why we must stay awake and alert to these opportunities. You heard me say at the top that we're starting a new book. It's a thick one, and we couldn't get it discounted enough to be able to give it to everyone in the parish, but that's why it's so great we're going to have excerpts every week. This book addresses what so many of us are so preoccupied with, that so many people that we love don't go to church and don't find meaning in parish life. How many times have I said in a conversation to someone, so do you have kids? And they'll say, Father, do I have kids? I sent them all to Catholic school, but you're never going to meet them. They don't go to church. I don't know why. I don't understand it. What this book challenges parishes like ours to consider is that every single Mass, there is someone who is there for the first time or the first time in a long time. There could be a million reasons why they are. Maybe there's a Mass intention that, that weekend for someone they love and they came to show respect. Maybe they have plans with someone after after Mass, and the logistics would have been too hard if they didn't just all go together. Maybe someone in the family asked for it as a gift. Could you please for me? But whatever the reason is, there's almost always someone here who hasn't been here in a long time and is looking for something. One of the things that we're being encouraged to do is to have an antenna up always. Because Jesus was in the business of finding people who were lost. And people coming here for the first time in a long time, or the first time ever, are seeking. And they want to be able to find him here. But we're only going to get one shot. Because this is kind of like an urgent care. A spiritual urgent care that people come to one time when the need is urgent. We won't get them again. They won't be back. So if we're not ready, if we're not awake, if it matters more for us to rush into our pew than to hold the door for the stranger behind us, we could miss the opportunity. So this week we are being given a really good opportunity for a little self-inventory. How awake am I to the moments of connection? that come my way, to the moments of wisdom. How awake am I? Are my eyes open for a gas station? Do I have the attitude that I'm below a third and I need to make sure that I am always looking for these opportunities to fuel up? Am I aware of a teenager lingering in the kitchen? Do I listen when an elder, maybe a grandmother says, can you sit down with me for a minute? Do I choose not to put that off, but to recognize that this is important? Maybe it's like, if we stick with the oil lamp image, it's like having a funnel on us all the time. I got a funnel. I'm not going to waste a drop of this. I'm ready to get all of that oil. I'm not going to spill any of it. At another parish that I served, there was a 104-year-old woman named Anne, and she was another pillar in the church. But because she was 104, she didn't come to church. She watched the live stream. And a lot of parishioners said, you've got to go see Anne, Father. Go see Anne. And I, I, I thought to myself, but Anne's not sick. She was actually vibrant and doing great. And so I thought, I've got to go visit sick people. I don't have time to visit Anne. She's fine. But one day it struck me, go see Anne. So I went to see Anne. And she was remarkable. She talked about all of her life experiences. She persevered through so much. She grew up on the prairies of Canada, married an American serviceman, came to upstate New York. Just a delight. And I could tell that she was just brimming with wisdom and joy. And so I said, Anne, what is your secret? And she said, Father, the secret is just to just live one minute at a time in life. You just got to live one minute at a time. And I said, And, you know, that sounds right to me, but but I don't know how to do that. How do you really do that? And she looked at me. She said, well, you can't live two minutes at a time, can you? 
So just let one. I thought that I was there for her, but she was there for me. That was a gas station on the journey. If I didn't have my funnel, I might have missed that. But we're called to be ready to fill up at any time. It seems that the older I get, the wiser my father seems to become.